Warning, the following content contains sounds. It has been shown that some sapiens of the Homo have episodic memory towards some sounds. Therefore, forming a bad reaction to certain sounds. Nevertheless, the sounds we use are only to mock actions and notions, which are, of course, ridiculous. We are not mocking the people who have them. No, no, no. Because you know in time, you may change what you do and change what you think. Having said that, this is a correlation sensation. A show where I talk about your mother's mammalian protuberances. Yes, yes. They come in all sorts of shapes, colors and textures and smells. But of course, we will proceed to something more important. Gork to void. Come in void. Gork to void. Come in void. God damn it! Answer me, you bastard! Speak now, or stick my foot up in your wazoo, cause we got a job to do. To study is why we were sent here to the zoo. Captain Gooch Gobbler said so, and I do too. There are dissections of evil sections, cross sections, different directions, humans swap in the dark, it's true. There are drug consumption, the marma junctions, assumptions, forming my gumptions. Humans love the dark, they'll fuck you too. There is poetry, philosophy, sodomy, and agony. Humans pop in the dark, they will pump you. Sensation after correlation, and correlation after sensation. Humans bump in the dark, here's how they grow. The farmer and the bell. Bah. The farmer and the bell. Is it my turn? Hi, who the dare you? The farmer in the bell. You want to talk, woman? Yes. Yes, I want to talk. I always want to talk. Yeah, you do. Yes, I do. You know, funny thing. For her, she always wants to talk. Yes, I do. Yep, yep, yep. You want to get, I don't know how you're going to do it to get a little bit louder. I'm a professional talker. Yeah, she's professional something. Yep. All right. You know, she can oh, yeah. do all sorts of things besides just talk, you know. Like what? What are you talking about? Oh, uh, you know. Oh. Uh, yeah. She can pick our nose. I can cook. Oh, she can cook. I can check the mail. She can clean. I can drive. All right. She can lactate still. (laughs) Confirmation. Confirmation. Bias. Oh, forgot. We got headphones. You know, I forgot all about my headphones. I'm going to take a step away. Oh, good, good. She put a big ass gash. In my ass. Having a blast. Yes. Sassafras. Woo! Uh, Feels so good. Gas or gas. Passing gas. Time to pass. That's my favorite thing to do. Pass the ass. Make my ass cheek. Can you pass the ass over here? (laughs) Blah, 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 blah. You. That's my ass cheek. Sounds more like a doorstop. <laughs> you, know, you know what else sounds like a doorstop, yes, right, Ford? Yes. What? Well, you know. You know. Boy. <laughs> Easy there, cornhole. Leo. Hey. <laughs> He's trying to put it in a cornhole. You saying I'm talking out to my ass? No, no, I just you said you sounded like cornhole. Cornhole? Yeah. Who is this? Beavis. Beavis. Yes. Beavis. Yes. Is, was he on our ship? No, be, a Beavis and Butthead. 
Beavis is your grandmother's dog. He's a Beavis. It sounds kind of like, oh, I don't know. Sounds like someone who would have been on our ship, especially the butthead. Yeah, it sounds like a little joke they had. You know? Yeah. Yeah? Sure. Sure. She says sure. You know what we do it today? What? Your mama. What? That's not nice. <laughs> who said I was nice? Well, you're usually nice to me when I'm cleaning the house and doing the dishes and cooking the food. But yeah? Yeah, when I make all the sandwiches all the time in the kitchen. Yeah, you can make some sandwiches. Yeah. And then I'll throw them right back at you because I'm on a diet, woman. Am I, am I the loudest? Yes, and Void is the most quietest. What yes, a surprise. What? Void? Yes. Make love to the microphone. Oh, ah, ah. A little more quiet now. Okay. I think yeah. he meant you need to stick it in your butt. No, 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 no. There's no, no holes no, in the no, microphone no, no, for no. your dick. No, I said make love, not sodomize. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a different chapter. <laughs> chapter 12 in our book. Mm. Out of 69 chapters. Uh huh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, you're going to write number 69, yeah. woman. Okay. You're going to talk about how you, you know, you know. <laughs> sure. Don't tell them all my secrets yet. Let them pay for the book. Yeah, to pay for the non existent book. Oh, there's going to be a book. Yeah. There's a bunch of books. Yes. Yeah. On all sorts of things. Yep, yep. Yeah, like the Bibble. <laughs> the Bibble? Yep, Bibble Babble. The Bibbleography? Yes. They talk all about John and Husafet and Jehoshaphat and Jabba the Hutt and, you know. Oh, yeah, and Luke, that guy that lost his hand and his father lost his hand. Yes, you you understand. Matthew. And the Jar Jar Binks. Mark. Yeah. Yeah, Mark. What a Mark. One second. <laughs> I see your breathing exercises are doing you well. Yes. Okay, you know what we do today. Oh, Void. Yes. Uh, what do you think about the new baffling? It's nice. It's very baffling. Yeah. It's baffling. Yeah. Yeah, that's what What's it is. What's so baffling? About, oh, yeah. I think the way you have it on the walls. What? You like it? Baffling. No, that's just the normal checkerboard. Yeah. Thing. With the alternating ridges facing different directions to break up the sound waves. Mm hmm. Yeah. I did a little thought. A little thinking on it. Yes, you yes. did it. You did the I, thought. It, now it looks well, like checkered vans in here. Okay. She was talking about it. Okay, but I did it. Yeah, I just was like, hey, that, that'd be a good idea to use it like that. And then... And voila. He was like, yeah, I thought of that way first. So shut Mark, up, Mark, do you remember the first box we used on my microphone? Don't forget to slap. Yeah, he did slap my ass. Oh, what did you say about your microphone? Remember, uh, we used the box? And, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had that... Uh, Oh, I still have it upstairs if you want. Sure. You okay. might have to sanitize it first. Okay. Why, do you guys use it again or something? Yes. Oh, yes. no. Yes. It's okay. You want to see what I got? What? Oh, what's so that? So we don't have to go to any more hospitals and steal any more cadavers. Oh, yes. And we got a little... I love that band. What? Yeah, there's a band called Cadaver. So you just made me go to the hospital the other day and steal three brains for mo no reason? I wanted... Well, it's not like they were using them. I wanted to compare it to what I have. I almost got arrested. I just sneak out in a hearse. You know, you know we could beam you up. Was the Blues Brothers theme playing in the background? Definitely. How, how big was the car pileup of police officers? And did John Candy attack you? Well, by the time I got beamed up into the ship, uh, there's about 12 police cars piled up behind my truck. Or behind the hearse. Mm. Yes. Yeah. 
So I got you, got you, you wanna, you wanna see what it looks like on the inside? Sure. Okay. You want me to split it open hot dog style? Or is this hamburger style? That was hot dog, yes. This is a hot dog, long ways. Yes. Separate the, the hemispheres. Maybe you can get the missing piece uh, put in there this time. No. Yeah, you know, every time I put one of these back together, you know, I thought this would be different because it's, you know, man-made. As you drop a piece. That's okay, it's just a base. Boy, can yes. you tell me what this is? The brainstem. Yes, yes. Do you know what constitutes as the brainstem? Uh, also the spine? No. Brainstem oh. is above spine. You know, below the brain. Yeah, uh, inside you snap that. Goodbye forever. Yeah, you got, you got right here is the medulla mm-hmm. oblongata. You should uh-huh. be a retard after that. And then right here you have the pons. Mm-hmm. The pons mubis. Whatever you say. And, of course, it has uh, got this thing here. They made the brain. Oh, i pop this out. Yeah. Come on. Come on. God damn it, come out, you. Fucking plastic. It doesn't squish around like a real brain. Mm-hmm. That cunt. You put that together. Actually, this is the pons in the middle brain. Ah. Yeah, pons, me the brain. Mm. Surrounded by your corpus striatum. Look here. What are these, Void? Are they the meninges? No. These are the lateral ventricles. Close, uh, though, close. Lateral. They do have something to do with cerebral spinal fluid. And just below that. Oh, is that the, uh, fluid, the way the fluid gets in out of the brain? Yes. Well, I mean, the, the, you also have veins. Yes, yes. And, uh, we were talking about the... Do you need a hand? Veins in the brain? The cisterns, yeah. Uh. Oh. That's in between. Weird. What? What, woman? I said there's veins in the brain? That's weird. All over the brain. It's a vein. In you ever brain. had a headache? It's when your uh, blood vessels contract. In never. The I've never had a headache in my whole entire life, just every time you speak to me. Thanks. I guess I'll bring that up in therapy later. Yeah. It's probably a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Then we have right here. You know, all brains look different, and sometimes when you cut them open with a... Uh, Hacksaw, or a jigsaw, and sometimes with an axe. You have things get moved around somehow. I don't know how. Anyways, we got uh, the third ventricle right here. Mm-hmm. He's, he's a funny little love bastard. In the fourth ventricle, too. You know, this is what goes down in the middle of the brain stem that goes down. That's the canal filled with cerebral spinal fluid. But this is not an anatomical episode like i thought it would be i started looking at it and said oh you know we've already covered most of these and we talked enough in detail basically what they would have described back in the day and we're going to talk about it eventually again because they'll do more studies actual studies on it you know do you have any idea who we're covering void Uh, no who your mama again jesus christ no no, we're covering John Locke. Oh, Locke, okay. Yeah, you know who John Locke is? Um, vaguely. Vaguely? Mm-hmm. I'll just say I have no fucking clue. Not any zero one bit. You know, that's why I love having the nut gather on here. She is spot on honest. I will you know, she tell, tell you, you that I know I absolutely know nothing. 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 You fill me up now. That's, That's what she says to me. Give me your knowledge. Yeah. It's so big, and throbbing long. knowledge. You know, the stuff that makes your brain pulsate. Shut the look on your face. <laughs> what? Yeah. The look on your face. <laughs> you look like you need a trash bag over here. You know, chuck up something. You feeling okay? Yeah, I feel great. I'm just a little groggy. Yeah. I'm jealous. Well, that's 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 because of the quaalude we put inside of your drink. I don't think I didn't know those existed anymore. Well, you could still make it up if you just know the formula. Oh. And plus, we can travel back through time. He's Bill Cosby's best friend too. Yeah, back there. He likes squeezing my meninges. Oh, lovely. Yeah. He puts a bra on it. 
He still does. Yeah. He tries to stick his dick, like, on the top of him. Yeah. And rub it. Like he's, you yeah. know, trying to get off in between some cities. Yeah, you know, that's a pain to clean up, too. When yeah. he makes a mess. Yeah, he does. He makes a big mess. When he pops his cork. That's about... Pretty an, gross. I'd say it's about an ounce, ounce and a half of jizz. I could swear his jizz is the color yellow, too. And then we rub it all in your hair. Yeah, there's something funky going on with that guy. Funky um, cold Medina. Yeah, yeah, probably. So, John Locke. Episode one zero seven. I am okay. super ready and excited like never before. Yes, once upon a time in England, closer to exact is Rington in Somerset in England. Even close to exact is a cottage right next to a church. Came out a fetus to become a baby whose parents were named Agnes Keane and John Locke Elder. The name of this fetus turned into baby was none other than John Locke. Although the Locke family is noted for belonging to the Church of England, the narrative has sympathy towards... Can you stop breathing like a goddamn dog? You breathing loud. (laughs) Sorry. I'm, I'm trying to calm down over here. I'm sorry. Well, you don't need to be sorry. I just, you like, breathe off of the microphone. What? Oh, you son of a bitch. I mean. That's not very nice to call him that. Why not? Because then you're calling me a bitch. I have no idea what you're talking about. I was talking about his daddy. Okay. Is that better? Yes. But you know who I'm really talking about, right, Void? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I'm gonna go make you a sandwich you can't eat. You motherfucker. I've never, ever fucked my mother. That's disgusting. Yeah, but you fuck yourself, so you're fucking Void's mother. That's true, okay. You fucked me too. At least so she's you're not a motherfucker. Uncle yeah, uncle fucker. I think everybody in this room is a motherfucker. That's actually true. Knock on wood. <laughs> you like to knock on wood? So, the name of this fetus turned into baby was none other than John Locke. Although the Locke family is noted for belonging to the Church of England, the narrative has. Sympathy towards the humans belonging to the puritanical sector of Christianity. I have sympathy for them right now, too. It must take a highly depraved individual to desire this Puritan point of view. I feel bad for them. You know? What do you mean? Oh, you know. You want to put clamp on penis, so when, you know, it starts to get hard, it, uh, it pokes the penis. So the penis goes flaccid. Oh, what is that called? Caging. Caging. No, he it's knows. not. It's not like. Well, maybe it's a fetish. Is that the no, fetish? No, it's a yeah, it is. Yes. They like doing that. Yes. Oh yeah. What? There, so there'll be somebody in charge of the key. Yes. You I know. thought it was a cuckold. No. Oh, that no. could be, but cuckold involves someone else fucking your, your wife. Uh, yeah, in front of you. Gosh, well, I imagine okay. your husband, too. Depends. Right? It just has to be a uh, lover being denied. Yeah, anyways, this is actually something that was not for sexual pleasure. This was for keeping teenagers under wraps. So like, teenagers? Oh, it's a chastity. Chastity. Yes, you know. They got the chastity mm-hmm. fucking underwear for the women, too. Was it the chastity clam? What if you have, like, a little pencil dick and you can get it in between the cage? Mm. She'll get it in, you know what I'm saying? I don't... I don't... I'd rather have one that couldn't get out the cage. Like a micro penis? Yeah, I don't think you I'd want to bust it. get it out at all because it's a micro yeah. penis. I don't think I want a little joystick. Dog standing up is his nickname. What? I said, 
The micro penis's nickname is dog standing up. Yeah, but when you know when you get a big dog standing up, it's it's a red rocket comes out and that thing ain't tiny. Tell you what. Well, it goes inside its body. Yeah. It's like a kangaroo. Except it's his penis. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so back we're to topic. changing our podcast to dog anatomy. <laughs> yeah. Dog dick. You know the the human brain is a little bit more complex than the dog anatomy, so we're going towards No, fuck that. We're going right back to topic, goddammit. So thank you, Void, for making me feel better. Red Rocket, Red Rocket. Back on. Yes, yes, John Lockett. John Locke grew up in a place called uh, Pinsford near Bristol. A quick search on the whole Google is where you will see this place located on the southwestern portion of the main mass called the United Kingdom now. Was England or Britain or what have you. At the age of 10 in 1642 is when the English Civil War broke out. This would then point to the next nine years of Locke's experience. An interesting color. I imagine red would be the color it would paint John Locke's, you know, experience. He means blood. Yes, Roy. How very observant of you. Like Thomas Willis's father, John Locke would serve in favor of the monarchy. Since John Locke's, since John Locke the Elder's career, was uh, that of being a lawyer. He served as captain of the cavalry. With... You okay, Void? Yes, sir. I just bumped the table. Yeah, you having fun there? Mm-hmm. Talking about blood? I take that as yes. Yes. <laughs> or you can say no. No. You could defend yourself. Be like, I am not a depraved human being. I am not puritanical and get off to pain. Champagne is good. Mm, yeah, yeah, kind of like serving in the war. And like John Locke the Elder, who served as captain of the cavalry, with a narrative that he saw little action. Somehow, I wonder why some would be surprised that the monarchy lost that war. At this point, Britannica's article claimed that this would make the king unfit to have been there on divine right. I assume it is for the fact that the King Charles I had been decapitated while his so-called God didn't intervene. This also comes as no surprise for me. Now, in the year of 1646, following the First Civil War, John Locke the Elder was able to get back to his son, who had uh, the same name, yeah, for some weird reason, who was proving himself capable in academia. So he sent John Locke, Jr. to Westminster School in London at the age of 14. John Locke, Jr. had began his schooling there in 1647. There was a mention of Westminster being ran by the Republicans since the new age of politics that occurred after, you know, King get chopped up. And uh, there was a a man, or one human managed to be left, at least one, who was a monarchy brown noser. I like that one, brown noser, void. It's a, it's a good figure of speech, you know. It's a luscious figure of speech. For a kiss ass. Mm, yes. I'm gonna, like, stick my nose in the ass. <laughs> God damn. I wonder how brown that nose got, void. Well, it depends on if he wiped. Yeah, I suppose so. And how big it is. The nose was pointy. Could go up further. You think that might have been like some nuts or corn? You know, sticking in the nostrils? Nuts. Yes. Nuts. Peanuts? Almonds? Walnuts? Cashews. Mmm, cashews. Cashews. Yeah, pistachios up nose after being passed Prelings. through the bowels. What? Pralines. Mm. Yeah. Or praline. pecans. Pralines. <laughs> yeah, the praline nut. Closely related to the pecan nut. 
What, you're saying academia isn't the nut? I thought you were saying uh, it was a nut when you were saying academia. Macadamia. Oh, yes. macadamia. Yes, macadamia nuts. Oh. So, the name of this human who fit this description was Richard Busby. He was also called a headmaster. So he was a buzz kill. Yeah. Busby. Man, do you think there's an arm master there, boy? What? A hand master, a foot master, a butt master at this school. You know, they have the headmaster. Uh-huh. You gotta have other parts of anatomy, correct? Yes, we gotta keep the uh, altar boys away from him. You got the toe master. <laughs> That's Quentin Tarantino, if you're wondering. Who? The foot master. The foot master? Yes. Didn't I just say toe master? I was making it more correct. Woman? Are you alive? <laughs> I have no idea. Oh. Of what? If I'm alive. Oh. Yeah, is I think this you are. real life? Did I just die? Uh-oh. Time is going really, really slowly. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> uh, anyways, Locke had been under the tutelage of Richard Busby. Britannica indicated, in a quote, remained under Busby's instruction and control. They proceeded to call Mr. Busby a strong disciplinarian. Hmm. In 1649, the boys that attended the school were not allowed to go see King Charles get decapitated, although the beheading was around a half mile away from their school. You know, they probably all tried. Hmm. I imagine many would. There, there is a, another thing that would have painted Locke's mind, too. You know, I imagine that would be with more red, of course. Along with the most important classes, in my opinion, which are mathematics and geography, the prescribed curriculum included a few languages. One would be Hebrew, one would be Arabic, the other two would be Greek and Latin, where all were taught. John Locke Jr. <laughs> he tutored. Yeah, so John Locke Jr. did so as well, and or, or did so well, and might have been brown-nosing the master of his head. Because I read, because I read that this human achieved the title of King Scholar. This title allowed him financial assistance in the feeling of honor. It is an honor to have your head sliced off. Yes, yes. That's one way to look at it. It's an honor. Yeah, it's not an honor. Yeah, it's been an honor serving as your Lord and Savior. Now, cut off my head. So, although Locke was a student of high value, he is credited for expressing distaste for boarding school's extreme amount of corporal punishment, along with uncivilized actions of pupils. Locke is also credited for a book he would have published named Some Thoughts Concerning Education in 1693, around the age of 61 Earth Revolutions, where the document urges for the perceived superiority of private tutoring over the former mentioned education style. Once John Locke had reached the year of 1652, in the autumn, at the age of 20, he began schooling at the largest college of the University of Oxford named Christ Church. This is where Robert Hooke went as well, with Tom Willis, too. And many others. And, and Robert Hooke actually attended this school one year later in 1653. This is also where King Charles had his court mandate. It's noted in Britannica's article that the most of the staff of the Christ Church were Republicans. Cromwell was the dean during this time as well. Locke has communicated to have indicated that the curriculum was not stimulating enough. And education was similar to medieval education, ignoring the more modern thoughts and sticking to Aristotle most significantly for logic. It's noted that although René Descartes and Francis Bacon, along with other modern natural philosophers, were not a part of this school's education, he would have read them anyways. A rebel against the rebels, huh? Right? Yes. Maybe it is. What? Maybe? 
He was reading stuff that was not supported by his educational masters. He could have gotten big trouble. Yeah, big doo-doo trouble. You know, what's this, philosophy? We don't want you thinking. Fuck that. You think that they could have had his head chopped off too? He'd probably just be kicked out. Yeah, they'd probably just kick him out. Oh, maybe so tar that's, feather him. you know, you have to be a serving person to get your head chopped off. No, not necessarily. It did the peasants. But since of his stature and only doing that. So say if he was trying to spread it and said stuff about discrediting it versus learning it, he'd probably. I imagine that if he got in trouble like that, they might have hung him. You know, like, you know, so he could end up in Thomas Willis's hands. So it would serve another purpose in neuroscience other than being a philosophical human being, which is re- becoming... Very disturbing to me, Void. That's a weird circle of life. Yeah, philosophers. Circular thought of life. A lot of it. René Descartes did not... did not... meet my expectations for someone who would have their name on this list of parts of neuroscience's history. Anyways, in 1656, Locke had achieved his bachelor's degree. In 1658, two years later... Luck achieved his master's degree. And then somehow, he became a student of Christ's church, according to Source 1, Britannica. Now this title, student, is misleading in my mind here, for this is related to have been the equivalent of fellow. Source number 2, which is notablebiographies.com, had used the term senior student, which would make a lot more sense. You know... Imagine someone who got their degree and then got the title of student. Kind of sounds preposterous. I had been a student and got a degree. Now, I am a student. A student of the hard knock life. Yeah, hard knock life. What do you mean? I was just saying that, uh... They had hard knockers back then? Yes. You think their boobs were not voluptuous? They were super hard. Oh, no. They were so damn cold. sounds terrifying. It'd be no like indoor rocks. heating. No, indoor heat. Well, they had hard nipples. I wouldn't imagine hard boobs. Yeah, maybe they're useful at the glass cutting factory. What? Maybe. They Cut the glass with nipples? Little titties, and they were cold and shriveled. Yeah. They cold, and then they got really hard you and think firm. If they were lactating, did they have icicles hanging from them? Most likely. Yeah. Yeah, like Mexico's, an old cartoon. Like an old cartoon. You know, when when they go in the frozen lake, they come out, they're all covered in icicles and blue. Yes, from and their shaking, nipples. And chattering their teeth. In the old cartoons. In the old cartoons. Good old-fashioned cartoons. Milk, nipple, icicles. Yeah, that was normal. It was uh, one of the Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse specials, right? Yes. Yeah. Minnie Mouse was the one who was surprised because Mickey Mouse had the... Milk nipple yeah, icicles. He did. And that's what's going to be coming up on the bloopers. And you'll never hear about it until it finally comes up, and it'll probably be years later. Maybe not. Maybe everybody won't be so fucking sensitive to you. Yeah, maybe the people will calm down. Be like, so sensitive. I'm happy now that yeah. COVID's not, not going crazy. I'm happy. Oh, it's been before COVID. Everybody's so oh, fucking yeah. sensitive yeah. about everything. I was I actually... can't even joke anymore. Yeah. Retard. Our experiment failed, Void. We wanted to get the humans to really accept each other through hardship. And what they do? They went crazier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was the exact opposite. We failed. The cooch gobbler's been up my butt about it. He's like, hey, you said it'd be a couple of years and people would be hugging and holding hands. You know. That's unrealistic. Apparently. Well, they it's got unrealistic. the government in their yeah. head and on TV and yeah. social well, media and excuse me for watch. not Excuse me for not understanding humans. Jeez. Well, maybe if you would have came and visited me before, it's, you'd know this. It's hard to understand illogical people, okay? It really is. You're going crazy at me. What did I do? I didn't mean to do anything. Why do you call me your enemy? You know? Like, what? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. You're, you're going to war, huh? Because you don't have any hardship. I want war. That's what you want. That's what you're saying. I want to kill. I don't know 
if they went to hell. Oh, I'm pretty sure they would. At least it sounds like it on the Twitter wars. Everything is amplified. I'm not on Twitter. I don't care. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, let's go back, huh? Sure. Another deviation I noticed between the two sources, one and two, is Source 2 communicated that since the strict religious rules of the Christ Church College at Oxford, I imagine had something to do with Cromwell's insanity, Locke would have had to have been ordained as minister of the college. Britannica did not mention this. Since Locke had been highly successful in education, he naturally became acquainted with Robert Hooke, Thomas Willis, Richard Lauer, Robert Boyle, in that fuckface named Christopher Wren. Locke is noted for working with the Boyle over blood regarding iatrochemistry. They did some work together. Everything seemed to have uh, gone really well for Locke until the year of 1660, when monarchy ruled once again. Sure, it had allowed many newer concepts to flourish in the education system with the foundation of the Royal Society, that used Robert Hooke like a crusty crumb rag. But it's also believed to have been claimed by Locke that the student, the sudden change from Puritan control to a more free social change allowed more vibrant actions by the people attending the education system there at the college. What a surprise, Void. You know, when you uh, have a Christian church, the Catholic church, right? having control over everything, not allowing religious freedom, there was more freedom in their education system. Whereas you uh, allowed these people called Puritans to become rulers, the education system went back. It's very interesting when you allow people who are really controlling to have control. That's why when people are demanding others to bend to their will, I imagine you would not want to do that just because they are being as mean as they can. Yep. And I will not bend to your will, Void. I see you over there. You, you're going to bend to my will? Yeah, sure. <laughs> just not Void, huh? Yeah. You That's know, it's nothing sexist. against It's nothing against your Void. What? It's nothing against you, Void. It is nothing against you for not bending against, you know, not bending for no, your No, no, I see you're just giving an example, yes. Yes, yes, a very good example. If I do say so myself. Of course, compliment yourself like you always do. You make a really good sandwich I can't eat, woman. That's right, I do. He just puts them on the wall like art. Hammers a nail into it and it falls apart on me. He's like, God damn it. Man, the best one is taking a sledgehammer and then hammering the mustard out of the sandwich. Where the man is. <laughs> Definitely. It's called mayonnaise. smash art. It's very, very therapeutic, Void. Smash fart? What? No. Smash art. Uh, you know, we could take the methane from a fart and cool it down to become liquid. That would take a lot of energy. That's exactly what we want to do. Yeah, we would take energy from the gas. We'd literally be getting energy to run our generator, making things cold. One of the easiest ways to do that. I mean, our species is good at it, and humans haven't done it very well. So, I imagine this experience from Puritan to back to the normal uh, would have painted Locke's head again. But rather than red, I'd, I'd imagine it would be brown. Why brown? Like shit. You know, all the social crap. Oh. You know, people were becoming more unruly and more wild. Because they're like, yeah, whoopity doo da. We're, the, we're, lis- we're reading Marques de Sade. Although they couldn't because it was illegal. They yeah, probably did. There was a black market there. I know. I was there. Black market books, right? Yeah. They had a black market exchange. Black Wall Street. You're mixing two things up. Oh, I mix it up, all right. I have no idea. I don't think any of that is or sounds wrong at all. 
Okay. I think I'm being too sensitive. if anybody takes it out of context, they can suck my balls. Then they're being ridiculous because there literally is a black market, and I don't know if there's a black Wall Street. There was. It was bombed to hell by a bunch of racists. I thought it was burnt. No, they, I'm not talking about that like a black market Wall Street. Then it was That's really black. Because there really is. The black Wall Street became really black after they burned it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. They bombed it. Yeah, ashes. It's Did they bomb it? Yeah, yeah. They do, dropped bombs from plant from. From crop, dust, from crop they, dusters. They do short really? The hillbillies did that? Yeah. The shares. They use methane bombs? I don't know. Because they're full of shit? I don't know. I think it was shares. some sort of high burning bomb. Ooh, this doesn't sound very nice. I know. What did he do with that? They can't even get along. Written back in 1660 was a book credited to Locke, only to be published in 1967. Over three centuries later, Void. Oh, wow. Which would show how people alter their perception over their life experiences. It was in relation to, you know, his experience of social change when he went back to the Church of England. This book was titled Two Tracks on Government. And this book is thought to favor conservative points of view. This point of view is that one could assume to have been in favor for a perception of social stability. But in 1689, another book Locke would later write is contradictory to this notion. This doesn't surprise me, for John Locke influenced many minds in the years over politics. And let us not go too far ahead of ourselves here through the timeline. In 1663, Locke was appointed senior dickhead. I mean, senior censor of Christ Church. This position he was found in had his duties giving a series of lectures. Discipline the undergrads, and supervise the studies of the college. The lecturing is said to have brought out this ridiculous notion pompously called the law of nature. I say ridiculous because it is claimed that there is the natural correctness and wrongness of all human conduct. Even Britannica pointed out the insanity, for in this law of nature itself there is no such thing as innate knowledge. That all knowledge is achieved through experience. I agree with the latter, for it just makes sense to me. Perhaps knowledge, with a more expansive definition, every bit of the universe communicates with itself. But the knowledge most humans think of is that knowledge acquired in the mind. Anyways, the law of nature isn't thought to have been published until 1954 anyways, according to Britannica. What do you think of the law of nature, Void? Did I say it too fast? Am I talking too fast? No. Are you sure? I'm just trying to think of the law of nature, what you meant by that. Oh, well, I, I said it's that nature has a natural correctness and wrongness of all human conduct. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You think so? That's up to interpretation. Well, that's a good answer for someone who doesn't want to get in trouble for it. Well, that's kind of true. It is up to interpretation. It's how you look at things. Well, yeah, I guess so. Because I guess the end result of everything would be correctness. And not only that, I mean, everybody thinks that they're really doing the right thing. Yeah, even though they're being... A fucking piece of shit. Hypocritical, doing exactly what they would not have done to themselves. Yeah. Yeah, it's very nice. Yes. Yeah, if you think you're right, strong enough... You will start to view everybody who disagrees with you a threat to your ideology. All you have to do is, would I like this done to me? Think about that. Would yeah. I like this would if I? somebody else did this to me? Would I like it? And also, you got to get rid of the perception that someone is doing something to you. You know, like, if someone, I don't know, gave you an opportunity to prove yourself over and over again, and you failed miserably and made things actually harder on everybody... And they they tell you to get your stuff and leave. Would you really blame them? Like some people would. They would blame them because they're like, I didn't do anything wrong, blah, blah, blah. It's their fiber because you failed the chance and you can't look see look at yourself. Yeah, that's probably what it is. They don't want to look at themselves. Nope, because I told... You were told exactly what needed to be done. There was even a list made. Yeah, not I mean, followed. 
You see us pie. Yeah, mm-hmm. hold your hand and you hours, failed seven miserably. Days a week, 365. Nothing to do but help and you don't do shit. Yeah, so. That's th- your fault. That's the law of nature in a nutshell, you guys. Don't blame everybody else for your problems. Yeah. So, uh, back to topic. I found no mention of 1665 for political affairs that John Locke was involved in when it came to the Britannic article. But Source 2 portrayed Locke to have traveled Europe as a secretary to the English ambassador, making him a messenger pigeon to the Brandenburg court. A quick search engine look would show that Brandenburg is a state located in the northeast portion of Germany. I imagine this course in life would have him meet up with the one named Lord Ashley, or just Ashley, by many articles I read, but I will call him Cooper, because that name sounds more, you know, vibrant to me. Along came the year of 1666, a human named Lord Anthony Ashley Cooper, who would be later the Earl to a place in England called Shaftesbury. Everything's a euphemism for penis now, isn't it? That's a nice name of a town. Shaft of berry? Yeah. Yes. Name. Shaft and only one berry. Like 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 the head of the dick is the berry? Like shaft berry? I no, was no. Suck like on my shaft, shaft berry. And then no, one I was thinking berry. nuts and a shaft. Oh. Kind of yeah. like. But I mean, they're not really part of the cock, the shaft. Maybe. Like a rooster neck. We're good, being very descriptive for our listeners. Thank you for uh, Gork's visual hour. Of disgusting yourself. Visual hour of cock and balls. Is it? Is that bad? No, no. no. I don't mind it, but I don't Absolutely feel like not. I, uh, the. Uh, you want a napkin? I see some drool hanging down there. What? I'm not. I'm not hungry. That's her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you are your mother's son. I don't want to go back to my first, first, pre-first apartment. Please describe. We Your shaft to, berries. We need to hear this. Oh, yeah. I'm when we were having a wild time. It was a good old days, boy. In the box. In the box. In the shaft berry here, shaft berry there. Under the bridge. Shaft berry everywhere. Shaft berry tree. On the walls. Shaft berry bush. The sweat dropped down my shaft berries. Ah, oh, skeet, 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 motherfucker. <laughs> exactly. Oh, skeet, skeet, goddamn. Goddamn. That should be our prayer before we have dinner every night. Yes, that's yeah. a good prayer. Yeah. Almighty Big Bang, the orgy of the universe. Ah, oh, oh, skeet, 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 skeet. Whatever it is, <laughs> we can work out the kinks. We can even have the kinks. Oh, skeet, skeet, big bang. Uh, Boom. Skeet, skeet, jizz on us. Almighty bing, bang. The star goo. All the raindrops coming from the sky. It's just ball sweat. Yeah, so anyways, all I want to indicate is that because of Locke's political points of view, Cooper was impressed with Locke. Cooper would then later become a leader of a group called the Whigs. I assume that these people all had syphilis. Yeah, wigging it out, you know. Oh, because they lost their hair. Well, I don't know. They called themselves the Whigs. I imagine they were they wore powered powdered wigs. Not powered. It just has a propeller on it. It goes flies off, yeah. lands on their head. Yeah. Spin it your wig upside down, if you agree. Wouldn't they fall off their heads? Probably. And didn't they use glues and stuff? Yeah, they got excited. <laughs> they just used rubber band power because they didn't have batteries back then. They uh, looked ridiculous. That's or all I wind know. power. Windmill wigs. <laughs> Windmill wigs. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, that would help, you know, turn the gears inside their heads. Green energy. Yeah, yeah, green. Green. 
A year after Cooper had met Locke, he invited Locke to be a part of his uh, Exeter house to be an aide, as well as a personal physician, even though Locke didn't have his degree in medicine around this time. That's what Britannica said, but Source 2 indicated that he did have a degree. So, who knows? I had read no mention of his degree of medicine until this point. Guess he must have, you know, just forgot it somewhere, though. You think he might have just left it at home for Or him? his other wig. Yeah, we we're talking about degree in medicine. He didn't he have it. He, you think left, he just it left it in his other wig. Yeah, he, oh, yeah, good idea. Do you, think that, do you think that when they had a drive-by musketing, they said, I'm going to cap your wig? Yeah. Do you think they said that? Bust a cap in your wig? Mm-hmm. With my mallet. With my mallet? <laughs> With my shaft berry? <laughs> yes, the shaft berry. That's a ver- pause for dramatic. Scene opens. <laughs> Men on horseback. Bareback. Oh. Shaftberry. Anyways, a yeah. uh, year. Yeah. So, it is thought that Cooper had rubbed off on Locke as much as that Locke would adopt a lot of a similar thoughts with constitutional monarchy, committed to civil liberty, religious toleration, parliamentary rule, economic expression. Sounds like colonizing to me. Or economic expansion which sounds like colonizing to me, and uh, Protestant succession. Locke is thought to have developed um, compositions for Cooper's addresses to Parliament. Locke is also indicated to have inserted a silver tube into Cooper's so-called tumor of his liver uh, so he could be drained, which would have relieved pressure that is assumed to have caused pain for Cooper. Locke's tube had remained inserted inside of Cooper for the rest of Cooper's life. Do you think there would have been any poisoning from that metal tube in him? No. It was a silver tube. Ah. Um, yeah. It's pretty interesting. I'll get to that a little bit later. By 1668, Locke became a fellow of the Royal Society, where he would work with Thomas Sydenham doing medical experiments. The silver tubed Locke is considered a junior to Thomas Sydenham, though. So, he is seen as an assistant. Locke is believed to have committed himself to empiricism in an attempt to weed out speculations. Unfortunately, humans, you know, are prone to speculate. You know, a story may, you know, seem to have formed in many humans when they see something happening at just the sight of a correlation that they have, which, you know for their sensation gives them a hunch. And this would have a room full of humans having a bunch of hunches. They just hunch down? Yeah. I guess so. Oh, I have a hunch. My name is Robert Hook. No, my name is Robert Hook. I have a hunch. No, I have a hunch. You're Robert Hook? Yeah, I could be anybody you want, baby. (laughs) Oh. Captain Hook. Ooh. Captain Robert Hook. You didn't have a hook for a hand? Yes. That'd be kind of sexy. You gotta have two hooks for two hands. You gonna hook me? Yes. I'm a hooker. Oh, you gonna do my job now? No. Oh. Look at Vaughn. Just sitting there sleepy. Sleepy, sleepy. What time is it? It's it's late. We're tired, man. Oh, you know what? It's 8.30. Okay. Okay. We're going to end this episode. Are you sure? Yeah. We're going to have another episode. We can have another episode over, you know, Silver Tube John Locke. Yes, yeah. very interesting. I was actually listening the whole time. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> sure, me too. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah, me too. I zoned out a few very... times, so I'm not going to lie, baby. Yeah, I'm I could tell. I'm fucking exhausted. Yeah, you know, we have a better week. You know, yeah. we have ups and downs, you know. Sometimes yes. she has to go up and down on me. Like a carousel. Well, here really yes. soon, we will be feeling a lot better and well-rested. Yeah. And well-rested, because uh, I'll I won't be, be staying up late and waking up early. <laughs> helping the nut gatherer gather nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've been gathering nuts all week. Yeah. Uh, at least a thousand nuts this she week. She did. She gathered a thousand nuts. This oh. week. Oh, this cool. Week. Yeah. 
a thousand nuts in a week. Boy, that's a lot of work in that's the winter. That's four thousand nuts a month. Jesus, that uh, is uh, almost um, almost double that a month. Close to double. I mean, j- the one she did in a week. So she'll beat me by uh, by double. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, a lot more than double people to take care of though. So we're eating lots of nuts over here. Yes. So we're pretty nutty. Uh-huh. Yes, we are. Uh, so oh. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.